most consistent and also, to my mind, pernicious lies he likes to tell is about alleged voter fraud. President Trump speaking out in his first television interview tonight, calling for a major investigation into bogus claims of voter fraud. Why? There's still no evidence of voter fraud, but there are still uh, thousands of Trump supporters who say there is. Saying at one point that very large numbers, uh, voter irregularities were reported involving very large numbers of people in certain states. There's, without providing any evidence of exactly what states he's talking about. Well, a Pew Research found that um, 2.75 million Americans are registered to vote in two states. I guess they don't think any of that is really important. I want now to introduce you to Mark Hemingway, who did investigative work into these bloated voter roll rolls and how that dynamic is rife for potential fraud down the road. Are, 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 are people conspiracy theorists for worrying about voter fraud, multiple votes, people who shouldn't be voting because they're not American citizens voting? I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that people should be concerned about this. Um, for instance, just in Los Angeles County alone, this is one county. They recently, you know, admitted that there was 1.6 million more voter registrations on file than there are citizens of voting age that live in L.A. County. I mean, that's obviously a huge problem, and it makes the place rife for fraud. And that's why a lot of these people also mark, um, same people saying Trump's, you know, a nutbag for saying any of this. They are against any kind of ID for voting. They don't believe you should really have to verify your identity for voting. It's an interesting, if you did the Venn diagram on the two groups of people, they kind of completely overlap. Yeah, no, absolutely. But but the other part of this is, that, you know, localities and state governments have to do their due diligence on this. I mean, federal law requires that they keep their voter rolls current, and that is not going on. And Stacey Abrams from Georgia, remember, she um, was defeated in her bid to be uh, governor of uh, Georgia. She brought this issue up. Let's watch. More than a million citizens found their names stripped from the rolls by the Secretary of State. Tens of thousands hung in limbo, rejected due to human error and a system of suppression that had already proven its bias. Well, that sounded really ominous. Like there was an effort to willy-nilly just take people off the voter rolls to deny them their sacred right to vote. Yeah, this has become a Democratic talking point that regular voter list maintenance in states is somehow part of some, you know, voter suppression effort. The reality is, is that Stacey Abrams' opponent, Brian Kemp, who was Secretary of State at the time, he pulled 1.4 million people off of the voter rolls in Georgia. But he did this over a period of eight years, where overall registrations increased in the state. And further, we now know that about 17 counties, according to the latest data in Georgia, have more, you know, voter registrations than voters. If anything, it appears that Brian Kemp didn't pull enough people off of the yeah, so he didn't actually, he wasn't, he wasn't aggressive enough in cleaning up the rolls. 11 percent of Americans move every single year. And, you know, you throw in deaths and all these other things. Voter rolls have to be maintained. And now Democrats are saying that it's basically a sinister plot if you go ahead and do this You know what this reminds me of? Just the way you worded this, it reminds me of the way they treat the border. That merely enforcing current law is a racist thing. Like, merely deporting people who have literally been ordered deported by federal immigration judge. That's a, that's a sinister plot. It's kind of the same thing, blurring the rule of law. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. But it's also true that negligence is a huge problem. There are... uh, this report is so important. We're going to have you on the podcast next week. Thank you for doing this. Thank Mark you. Mark Hemingway. Last Bite, up next.